Hi, Life Point Christian Church boys and girls. This is Granny Miriam again, and I'm here with another great question and even better answer from God's Word. We've been looking at questions that people ask all the time, and this one is a really important question. The question is, what should I do when I'm scared? You know, everybody gets scared. And sometimes we get really scared. And sometimes we get really worried. And we're, we're afraid what's going to happen next. And sometimes fear can just kind of paralyze us. And we don't know what to do. But the Bible has the answer for that. And that's in our memory verse today. And it is, I hope you can see it. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Okay, so let's look at what this means. The angel of the Lord encamps. That means it's like the angels of the Lord are all around you all the time. If you're one of those people who fear the Lord. Now, what does fear the Lord mean? Well, it means you have great respect for God. You know that he's the awesome, mighty God that created you and created this whole universe and holds everything together. And you know that. You believe it. But also, it means you trust him. You also believe that he loves you and that he's going to do whatever it takes to keep you safe, to keep you from being destroyed. So, the, let's just remember this verse again. It's from the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Delivers means rescued. Now, that doesn't mean that nothing bad's ever going to happen to you. Bad stuff happens to everybody, whether you're following Jesus Christ and worshiping the Lord, his, our Father and His Father, whether you're worshiping God or not, bad things are going to happen. But what it means is God will save you from those bad things. He'll keep those bad things from destroying you. Now, I want to show you something. Y'all know what this is, right? This is an oven mitt. We didn't have these in my day. So in my day, when I was reaching my hand into the oven, I got burned a lot. I wish we'd had these. When you put this oven mitt on and you reach in to get something out of the oven, the heat cannot hurt you. Now, the heat's still all around you, but you're protected. And the angels of the Lord are sort of like your oven mitt. Bad things are going to happen, but you're not going to get a bad burn. Okay? All right. Now, I want to tell you an amazing story that actually happened 2,000 years before I was born. Now, you know that I was born over 2,000 years ago. So this happened more like 4,000 years ago. This happened in the very early years of Israel as a nation. Now, let me tell you, Israel was not always a nation. It's a nation today, but for many years it wasn't. Israel started out as a family, Abraham's family, right? And that family grew, and there were lots of kids, and more kids, and grandkids, and it got up to over 70 people. But then that family had to go into Egypt. It went into Egypt because there was a famine in the land. That means, that means there was no food. And when they got into Egypt, they stayed there. And in Egypt, this family went from about 72 people to about two and a half million people. Can you believe it? But it still wasn't a nation. They were just called the Hebrews or the Hebrew slaves because the Egyptians turned them into slaves. All right, so God sent a powerful leader in to lead these people out. But you know what? He didn't start out as a powerful leader. His name was Moses. And when God told him to go down and take his people out of Egypt, Moses was scared to death. Yes, he was. In fact, he even said, Lord, send somebody else, please. I don't want to go. But the Lord showed him that he would be with him and that he could do everything the Lord wanted him to do because the Lord would give him the power to do it. So Moses, he kind of dragged his feet, 
But he made it down to Egypt, and sure enough, he did accomplish everything the Lord wanted him to do. Well, from that point, the Hebrew people, the children of Israel, you might call, call them, went out of Egypt, and then they just wandered around in the desert for over 40 years. They still weren't a nation. They were just a bunch of people, about two and a half million people, wandering around in the desert with no sense of direction. They didn't really have any sense of themselves being a nation yet. It wasn't until they got a land, their own land, and this was the land that the family had started off in way back at the very beginning. It was the land that they'd come from. They went back into that land and God said, you take this land, you conquer this land, you get rid of everybody in this land and it'll be your land and you will be a nation. You will be a people. You will be the nation of Israel. Well, you know, they kind of did it and they kind of didn't do it. They went into the land and they fought a lot of battles and God was with them and they won a lot of battles and they, they conquered the people of the land but they didn't get rid of them. God said get rid of them because if you don't get rid of them, they're going to get you in trouble. And that's exactly what happened. The people of the land kept getting the, pe the people of Israel, the Jewish people, into lots of trouble. You see, these people worshipped different kinds of gods who weren't really gods at all. They were just idols. But these gods were kind of disgusting. And they told the people that, that worshipped them to do disgusting things. Not that they were really talking. You understand that. But that was part of the religion. Doing disgusting things was part of the religion. And God knew that if they left these people in the land, that the Jews would start doing the very same things that these people were doing. And that happened over and over and over again. Time and time again, God's people, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, would start worshiping the gods of the people that they had left and doing all the disgusting, awful things. I could give you some examples of that, but I really don't want to do that. You really wouldn't like it. They'd start doing all those disgusting, awful things. Well, when they left God, God kind of left them too, but not really. I mean, when they left God, they left God's protection. God wouldn't protect them anymore if they were running as far away from God as they possibly could. And then they would get into even more trouble. More horrible things would happen. These nations around them would come in and they would take them over. And they would take all their food and they would take their kids and turn them into their slaves and they would make the Jewish people pay high taxes and they would make them give them their livestock and all their money and it was bad it was so bad well God would start feeling sorry for his people even though they had run right out of his protection he would come back and establish his protection again even though they weren't being faithful he did that by raising up what the Bible calls judges. Now, these were leaders, but they were also the same as judges today. They would settle disputes. They would hold court. They would make decisions for the people. And they were the ones to do all that because they were listening to what God told them to do. Now, you might think all these judges were powerful super guys. And some of them were powerful super guys, like Samson. He was probably the strongest guy that ever lived, and he was one of the judges. I mean, he could defeat an army all by himself, and he did it several times. Yeah, all by himself. And a lot of these other judges were real He-Man guys. They were superheroes, just like you have today. I mean, they were like Captain America. But not all of them... In the story I'm going to tell you, the judge that I'm going to tell you about was a housewife. Her name was Deborah, and this is Deb's story. Okay, Deb became the judge over Israel because she was listening to God. She was probably the only one listening to God. And people would come to her and ask her to settle disputes between them. She was their judge. She was, she was setting up court. Now, she had an interesting courtroom, and I'll give you a little picture of it. 
Her courtroom was under a palm tree. Yeah, people would come to Deborah and ask what, what they should do and ask her what her judgment was in a situation. And she was sitting under a palm tree and this was her court. And I'm gonna give you a palm tree which you'll be able to decorate. Uh, and there's several ways that you can do that, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so she was sitting under a palm tree and the people would come to her. Well, the people were terribly oppressed. Now the nation that was had them under their thumb was the nation that they were supposed to kick out to begin with. They, Israel had defeated this nation, but they hadn't kicked them out. That was the Canaanite nation. Okay, in the meantime, this Canaanite nation that wasn't kicked out, they got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And at this point, they had a really tough king and an even tougher general. His name was Sisera. And he had really built up their army. In fact, their army had 9,000, no, I'm sorry, I'm overdoing it here, had 900 iron chariots. This was like having about a thousand tanks today. These chariots, probably a lot of them were wood, but they were bound about with iron so that they would not come apart. And with each chariot, you had two men, a driver and a fighter, and the fighter would spear people or get them with his sword. So this was like a killing machine, this tank. And Sisera had 900 of them and a powerful army to go along with it. Well, the Israelites didn't have anything. They didn't have any chariots. If you were an Israelite, you were lucky to have a spare sword, okay? They didn't have any way to defeat this enemy at all. But one day the Lord came to Deborah. Remember, she had his ear open to him. And he said, Deborah, I want you to call up a man named Barak and he is going to be the general of Israel's forces and tell him to raise an army. Well, Deborah always did what God said. So she called Barak and she said, Barak, I want you to raise an army. I want you to call on the men from two tribes. There were 12 tribes of Israel, but the Lord had only asked Barak to call up the fighting men from two tribes. And then I want you to go out and fight Sisera. I'm sure Barak was going, oh, 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 Lord, you got to be kidding. Deb, you must have heard wrong. I just bet that's what he was thinking. I bet he was seized with fear. But finally he said, all right, you're the leader of the people, and I will do what you say, but you have to go with me. Now, was Deborah a soldier? No. Was she a general? No. What was she? She was a housewife, right? She was a married lady who was holding court under a palm tree. But she said, yes, I will go with you. Now, the reason Barack wanted her to go with her is pretty plain. He wanted to make sure that the Lord was on his side and he knew the Lord was talking to Deborah. So he knew that the Lord loved Deborah and that Deborah loved him and that she was in awe of God. And because she was in awe and fear of God, he knew that angels were encamped around this woman. So he wanted her to go out with him. She said, I will do that, but a woman's going to get the glory for your victory. Well, sure enough, it was a victory. Barak only had 10,000 men, which wasn't a bad army, but Sisera had a lot more than that. But as Barak went forward to attack Sisera's army, with his few little swords and a few little spears and no chariots at all, and Cicero was coming with these big chariots like tanks, the Lord started fighting the battle for Barak. And he started killing the Canaanites even before Barak got to them. So that when Barak got up there, he just kind of had to clean up with his 10,000 men. And the Canaanites were scared to death. They were running. The chariots were running over their own people. They were running, running, running. They were in a panic. And Barak was just coming behind and just killing them right and left. Well, Sisera ran off and hid. He had been thoroughly beaten. And he needed to find a place 
to hide from the Israelite army because he was afraid of what would happen to him if they caught up with him. Here's his mighty general. Now he's helpless. Well, he went to the tent of a woman named Jael. Now, she was married to a guy who was not an Israelite. She was married to a guy who was kind of allied with these Canaanites. So he thought he was going to a friend's tent. But what he didn't know was Jael was not his friend. She was a friend of God. Okay. So she said, come on in, my Lord. Come on in. I will take care of you. And he said, oh, oh, I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. Please, please, please give me some water. Well, she didn't exactly give him, give him water. She gave him milk. Now, this is kind of important because milk helps you make, you, make you sleepy, right? He was already exhausted. So she made a nice bed for him. And she said, just lie down here, my Lord. And he said, okay, but if anyone comes, if anyone comes to your tent, don't let them know that I'm here. Tell them no one is here. So she said, oh, yes, yes, that's what I'll do. Just lie still, just relax, take it easy. Everything is okay. So he went sound asleep. And then Jael went back and she got something. Does anybody know what this is? It's really old. This is a tent peg. Okay, they make them out of plastic now, but they were probably out of wood or metal back then. And she killed Cicero with a tent peg. Now, I'm not going to tell you how she did it because it might give you nightmares. But if you're curious about how she did it, you can read this in the book of Judges chapter 4. It will tell you how what she did with this tent peg. But guess who got the glory for the great win that day? Deborah and Jael and her tent peg. So, here are two ladies that should have been scared. They should have been. And maybe they were for a few minutes. But both of them realized that angels encamp around those who fear God. And they did exactly what God told them to do. Well, you know, you can do that too. You can be one of those people that fears God, that angels camp around. And just to remember this story, you're going to get Deborah's palm tree. And you can just color it if you want to. You might want to add a coconut or two if you want to. If you want to, you can use green paper, maybe green crepe paper, and make this look more like leaves. Uh, in fact, I might be able to get you some of that green Great paper if you want to do that. But here's your activity for today. Color Deborah's palm tree and put it somewhere that you can remember that if you listen to God like Deborah did, that angels are encamped around you and they will protect you. Not from trouble, because you're going to have trouble, but they will deliver you out of it. And that's all we have today. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.